<laughs> what a vicious cycle of events you've endured throughout this educational process. It's enough to make your head spin, isn't it? <laughs> I'm Menopause Barbie, your Menopause Taylor. And while some aspects of menopause itself are head spinning, vicious cycles, <laughs> sometimes there are smaller vicious cycles within the bigger vicious cycles. We are currently embarking upon a big unit on epithelial ovarian cancer, and you've just endured 12 separate videos on all the risk factors for it. Throughout those presentations, you've discovered that there are overlapping risk factors, redundant risk factors, related risk factors, unrelated risk factors, and uncertain risk factors. We've made a massive chart of risk factors that is so cluttered, it's difficult to decipher the tiny print. Today, I want to look at all these risk factors as a unit. I want to show you that together they represent a vicious cycle. And while we tend to think of vicious cycles as undesirable, you will see that this vicious cycle actually makes it easier to understand the risk factors for epithelial ovarian cancer. Now this is one of those big picture videos. It takes all the individual lessons and combines them. As such, you will not find it presented this way in my book, but it's still a good idea to have the book. <laughs> so let's just go through each category of risk factors, adding each as a contributor to epithelial ovarian cancer and see how they create a vicious cycle. We'll pretend like we're little kids and demonstrate this using construction paper. When I was a kid, <laughs> we used to use construction paper for just about everything. <laughs> it was an absolute necessity in our lives. But as I was preparing this video, I realized that I haven't used construction paper in over 50 five years and it made me feel really old and I decided that we just had to use it in this video. So here I have a whole package of construction paper and I have made circles of varying sizes with the construction paper to represent each of our risk factor categories. The colors correspond to the color categories on our chart of risk factors. And what we'll do is we'll place these circles on this board. If the circle of risk factors has no effect on any other risk factor, I'll place it in an isolated location, having no contact with any of the other circles of risk factors. And if the circle of risk factors has an effect on any other circle of risk factors, I'll place it in contact, overlapping the other circles of risk factors for which it has an effect. So first is the category of hereditary risk factors. This includes any genetic mutation that increases your risk for epithelial ovarian cancer. This green circle will represent the hereditary risk factors. And we're going to place it here on our board. And of course, remember, it represents only 20% of all epithelial ovarian cancers, and that's why it does not get center stage. Now next is your personal history of other medical problems that put you at high risk for epithelial ovarian cancer. We call this personal history of ovarian cancer, breast cancer, or endometriosis. And we're gonna represent that by this pink circle. And while this is a separate category from the hereditary epithelial ovarian cancers, you've seen that it is difficult to disengage the hereditary from the non-hereditary cancers. So being realistic about the true state of affairs, instead of placing this circle apart from the circle representing the hereditary cancers, Let's place it here with a bit of an overlap. Now, for family history. This is a family history of ovarian cancers only. 
It does not designate other cancers except those attributable to genetic mutations in the hereditary risk factor category. And even though there is supposed to be a distinction between family history of ovarian cancers and hereditary epithelial ovarian cancers, we've established that the research is too flimsy, flaky, and fakey to separate them. So once again, instead of placing this purple family circle out of contact with the green hereditary circle, let's deal with reality and create a bit of an overlap. But it definitely does not overlap with your personal history because you are not your family. So we're going to place this one right here, overlapping hereditary only. But next, we have your own personal profile. That's this yellow circle. Your personal profile includes your age, race, ethnicity, and height. And it overlaps with both the hereditary risk factors and your family history risk factors. It can also overlap with your personal medical history risk factors. So we're going to place it right here, encroaching a bit on all of the others. Let's do it just like that. Now for your reproductive and hormonal risk factors. That's this orange circle. Your reproductive risk factors include anything that increases the number of menstrual cycles you have had in your lifetime. That can be having your first period very early, never getting pregnant, never breastfeeding, infertility, infertility drugs, and having your last period very late. It's anything that keeps your ovaries working at creating cycles. Let's see. The only risk factor category having anything to do with your reproductive history is your personal history. And the reason your personal history overlaps with your reproductive history is because endometriosis can contribute to a reproductive history with lots of periods. And endometriosis is a common cause of infertility. So we'll place our orange circle here, overlapping a bit with your personal history, right there. Okay, what about your lifestyle risk factors? That's this blue circle. Your lifestyle risk factors include high dietary saturated fat, alcohol, smoking, sedentary lifestyle, and obesity. These are the very same lifestyle factors that increase your risk for breast cancer. And breast cancer is one of the personal medical history risk factors for epithelial ovarian cancer. So the only overlap we have for your reproductive and hormonal category is your personal history. And that means we're going to place this blue circle overlapping with your personal history. Like this. See how this works? <laughs> Inflammation is the next category of risk factors. That's this red circle. Inflammation includes endometriosis, talcum powder use, and pelvic inflammatory disease. Well, endometriosis and pelvic inflammatory disease constitute aspects of your personal medical history. And they can also affect your reproductive history. So our red circle for inflammation belongs here, overlapping see, overlapping these other two. There we go. <laughs> A little crooked. <laughs> it overlaps the personal history and reproductive history. And our final category is the psychological risk factors, and they include stress and depression. Our circle for that is this periwinkle blue-violet color. Well, which of these other circles can constitute either stress or depression? 
all of them. Isn't it interesting that the one risk factor that seems most insignificant underlies all the others? It can affect and overlap all of them. Too bad I didn't start at the bottom of our risk factor chart. Now I've got to find a way to place this circle so that it overlaps all of them. <laughs> How about this? <laughs> what can I do here? Well, I'm going to have to lift up all of these. And maybe what I can do is put this under here and that on top of that and this here. Voila! There we go. Now it's under the whole lot of them. <laughs> so the point of this video is that no risk factor category really stands alone. They all play into each other and the result is a vicious cycle of risk factors. There's really no other summary for this tutorial than that, but I think we made a rather pretty set of circles with our construction paper, didn't we? <laughs> that brings us to the end of the tutorials on the risk factors for epithelial ovarian cancer. Next week, we'll move on to the part of the epithelial ovarian cancer unit that addresses symptoms of epithelial ovarian cancer. Don't miss your opportunity to come back in a week to see what the symptoms of epithelial ovarian cancer entail. Don't miss your opportunity to schedule a consultation with me at menopausetaylor.me to see what your personal situation entails. And don't miss your opportunity to subscribe this week to the only YouTube channel that is really a classroom so that you can learn what health and menopause entail. And don't miss your opportunity to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to find out what other things in my life entail. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>